Okay, I'm going to start. Uh, let's talk about shells. Uh, there are several shells that run on the Linux and on the other Unix systems. Uh, just a uh, little uh, resume. Uh, Bash is one of them, is the object of this course. And uh, uh, it's called Born Again Shell, Bash. Is based on earlier uh, born shell for Linux, for Unix, but extended it in several ways. In Linux, Bash is the most common default shell for user accounts. Um, is the one that we are going to emphasize in this course. Uh, Bash is the default shell when you do a Windows uh, Linux installation. Uh, TCSH, uh, this shell is based on earlier C shell. It's popular in, in, in some circles, but uh, most of uh, major Linux distributions don't uh, make it as the default. C shell is the original C shell. It's not much used in, in Linux, but some people is familiar with, with its use. The corn shell KSH is was designed to take best pictures of corn shell and extend them further. Uh, I don't like corn shell. It's very common to see in systems like uh, HP Unix, Hewlett Packard Unix, or Solaris. But uh, Bash is more powerful and, and more useful. The C shell uh, is basically an evolution of the corn shell, but it's also, we could see that as an evolution of bash. Uh, currently, C shell, C shell uh, is the new default shell on Mac OS 10. Mac OS 10 still can use uh, bash, but uh, Apple is moving away from bash. The reason is that the the latest versions of Bash uh, don't have 100% open source code. There are a few things, a few features of Bash that uh, are not open source and Apple doesn't want to, to mess with that. So Apple is moving uh, out of Bash. It, that means that if you're running Bash on Mac, you are having a version that is a little bit older than the version that you are running on Linux. But in 99% of the same, the same shell. Again, the object of this course is bash. So whenever we say bash or shell, we are or terminal, we are talking about the same. Okay, uh, let's explore our Linux shell option. Pad, pad is a shell variable. It's also called an environment variable. It holds the search path performance. So it's a common, a, a column uh, separated list of directories in which the shell looks for comments. A common value for pad is, for example, this one that that is here in the, in the example. So when you type a command on the command line, the shell goes to these directories in the order that they are in, in this example, for example, and it looks for a program with the name of the command that you just typed. So for example, it goes first to user local bin, then it goes, if, if it doesn't find it, in that directory, then it goes to user bin. If he's not found in that directory, it goes to bin and so on. Uh, the first occurrence that bash finds is going to run the command. So for example, if we, for any reason we have one command in, in two different paths, the first one that is found is the one that is going to run. Uh, probably, uh, 
if you have two comments in two different paths, they are different versions of the comment. Some of them are have been styled by some package and they are different. So sometimes you you need to if you if the behavior is not what you are expecting, you have to, to take a look at in, in all the paths where the comment is is residing. Uh, but it's slightly different for the user because there are comments that only root can run. Uh, those comments are in directories that only the root can see. It doesn't mean that a regular user cannot read the comment, but if the user, a regular user runs the comment, uh, probably is going to get a permission right. Uh, those comments are in directories like has been slash has been or a slash user slash has been. Uh, there are comments, for example, like mount. If you want to mount a file system, the only user that can mount file systems is the root user. So, but if you run the mount command by itself, it's going to show you the mounted file system. So, you as a regular user can run that command. But but it's not visible in, in your command line. So if you type mount enter, you are going to get a message like a command not found. But if you type slash has been slash mount enter, you are going to get a list of the of the of the mounted file system. Uh, when you type a command in the command line. I said already that the shell looks for a file in the directories listed in the path variable in the same order that they are in the variable. When the shell finds the first one, it runs it. So we have, for example, we have two examples in, in the black box. Uh, for example, we, we, we can, ah, if you want to know where the executor is located, you can run a common call wish. So wish grep will return user being grep. So you now know that the full path of that command is slash user, slash bin, slash grep. For example, if I run a command wish, no command, which of course doesn't exist, the, the, the result is wish no command in, and it will save the path. It means that the, the, the shell looked in all those directories, I didn't find uh, a program com called no command. Well, uh, command completion. This is one of the very good uh, tools of Bash. So many users find typing commands to be tedious and ever prone. This is particularly true for a slow or the sloppy tedious. Like myself. For this reason, Linux Bash shall include various tools that can help to speed up operations. Uh, the first is the common completion. So you can type a part of a comment and as an, as an option or as an option to a comment, a file name, and then press tab. The shell tries to fill in the rest of the comment or the file name. If just one common file name matches the character you typed so far, the shell fills uh, in and places a space after it. Um, let me see if we can do uh, an example. Hey, Marco, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, your mic is a little bit too low and uh, noisy. By any chance, can you increase the volume or maybe change the mic? Let me, let me check.
can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can can you can you see better now? Yes, much better. Okay. Thank you. So let me see if I can show you an example. I'm going to change the screen. Uh, let's say we are going to do a, a command, for example, mo, and I type a tab, the tab, will complete, but it's not going, it's not showing me an space after the comment. It means that there is more. So if I tap again, it's going to show me all the comments that start with the word mount. So basically it's mount and a, a different file system. I could mount a, a an AFP, this is Mac. So this is basically um, file systems related to Mac, Mac. But you can see, for example, mount NFS or mount NTFS. So I still can mount different uh, file systems. Uh, but anyway, the, the purpose of this is you can see that if I tap, for example, Mo, if I write Mo and I tap, it's going to show me all the comments that start with Mo. M O, for example, more. And if I do mount, for, for example, mount and space, and I do tab, it's going to show me, for example, the files that are in in that directory that uh, the, the shell is supposing that maybe I want to mount. Of course, I cannot mount a file, but is showing me as, as, as options to, to fill in. Okay. So, uh, If the characters you've typed don't likely identify a command or a file name, the shell fills in what it can and then it stops. Like the example that I did uh, a few minutes ago, uh, mount, and but it didn't give me the space command, the, the space character, sorry, because there, there are more options still that can be used. Uh, depending on the shell and its configuration, it may beep. And if you press the tap, the tap key again, the system re re responds by displaying all the possible completions. You can either type another character and, or two and then tap again, or you just, uh, if you haven't completed the command or, or file name, press the tap key again to have the process repeat. History. This is by far the most powerful tool of the command line. The history keeps a record of every command you have typed. Uh, it's a story now in a file called uh, bash history. Uh, that virgula here, this little character here, uh, in English is called tilde. It means home directory. So it represents your home di directory. That means that that file dot bash history is in your home directory. And that file keeps track of all the comments that you have been running uh, recently. And if you have typed a long comment recently, I want to use it again or use a minor variant of it. You can pull the comment out of the history. The simplest way to do this is to press the up arrow key on your keyboard. So you just type up, up arrow and you see the last comment. If you press up arrow again, 
you see the previous comment to that one and so on. So you can keep pressing up uh, or down if you want to, to go down again. Uh, but you are seeing the, the last comments that you have typed. So let's say you find a comment that you already run uh, before, change uh, maybe a word or a letter, whatever you need to change, and press enter to run the comment again. Okay, can you listen to me? Hello. Yes, yes, we can. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, frequently after finding a comment in the history, you want to edit. Uh, the bash shell provides editing features model after those in the Emacs editor. So editing the command line, for example, if you want to move within the line, uh, you press Control-A, for example, or Control-E. Control-A moves you, moves you to the beginning or the start of the line, and Control-E moves to the end of the line. Uh, the left and right arrows move within the line. So. Uh, mm, pressing control plus left or right arrow, uh, alt left or alt uh, right in the Mac. It moves backward or forward one word at a time. It, it does the same when you press escape B or escape F. Escape B is escape, you could see escape back and escape F is escape forward. So if you want to move forward one word, you can do escape F, back one word, escape B. Uh, you can delete the text by pressing, for example, Control D or the delete key. So it deletes the key, the character under the cursor, whereas pressing the backspace delete the, the the character to the left of the cursor. Uh, pressing Control K, this one is very useful. Control K deletes all the text from the cursor to the end of the line. So let's say you have, you have moved to the middle of the line and you don't need the rest of the, of the line. You're just going to change one letter in, that, in one parameter and you, get, you need to get rid of all the remaining characters to the right. You just press Control K and all of the right uh, disappear. Uh, Control X uh, will, will do the same, but to the beginning of the line. And uh, Control U uh, also deletes all text from the cursor to the beginning of the line. Control U is very useful, for example, when you are logging in into a Linux system, that when you are typing your password, you cannot see the password in, in the screen but you feel that you made a mistake. So the best way is to do control U. Control U and start, uh, and start again. Because control U will clear the, the, what you have wrote so far. So control U clears and you can write your password again if you felt that you mistyped something. Uh, control T transposes the character before the cursor with the character under the cursor. Uh, escape and then the T transpose, uh, do the same, but with two words. You change the words, the order of the words. 
uh, change case, uh, present escape, and then you convert the text from the cursor to the end of the word to uppercase. Uh, escape an L to lowercase. Um, pressing escape and then C converts the letter under the cursor or the first letter of the word to uppercase, leaving the rest of the word unaffected. Maybe you need just to uppercase the first letter. It's very common. Uh, These editing commands are just the most useful ones supported by Bash history. Uh, you can consult the man page of uh, Bash, which is basically is so long that it's almost a book. Uh, and you will find many, many more obscure editing features. Uh, with, from time, with time, will make you experts uh, doing that. L let me show you the common, uh, the manual page of Bash. This is the man page of Bash. And this is very, very, very extensive. Let's go to the end and we can see, for example, it has 3,938 3, lines. So it's, if you have time and you can read this, you are going to become experts in, in Bash. Okay. Um, The history command itself provides an interface to view and manage the history. For example, typing history just by itself uh, will display all the comments in the history. Typically, the latest 500 comments because the default in, in Bash is uh, uh, the default in Bash is 500 uh, comments, but you can. Um, change that in your configuration, your personal bash configuration. There is a file called dot, dot bash RC. You can change up uh, environment variable in that file. So you can increase that uh, or decrease that number. My, I myself, I use 10,000. So I have the history of the last 10,000 comments that I have run. Uh, Adding a number will cause the, the, only that number of the latest comments to appear. For example, if I write history space five zero, it will show you me the 50 last comments. Uh, history minus C clears the history, but I don't recommend to do that. History is a very powerful tool. So if you keep uh, clearing your history, you are losing your your tool that is going to help you to run another command for a second time. Sometimes the commands can be so long that uh, you cannot learn them from memory. So the best way is, I, I remember that I ran that command last week. So let's look in my history how I did that. So you look your history, you find the comment, you just edit one or two letters that you need to, to edit, press enter and the comment runs again. So it's good to have a, a history. Let's do this exercise. I suppose that you already have a session to a, to a, to a Linux system. So, Let's start by creating a temporary directory by typing mkdir space test. Now let's 
CD, CD is change directory. So let's change directory to that new directory that we have created. CD test. We are now in that directory. If you want to be sure that you are already in that directory, you can run this command. PWD. PWD. That means print working directory. PWD enter and it will show you the path of the directory you are now. You can create a few temporary files by typing tosh. For example, we can create three files. We can type tosh one, space two, space three. And this command will create three empty files with the names one, two, and three. If you type uh, ls space minus l space t, uh, and then without pressing the, the enter key, the, uh, and then press the tab key, the system may beep or display two and three. So it's saying that you have two files that start with t. So ls minus l, t, tab, and if, there are three files in the directory, but only two files start with a T. So it's going to show you which files start with T. Uh, if it doesn't show, you just press the tab again. It should go. So for example, if you type H and then tab, it's going to complete because there are no more possibilities. So if you type TH and then tab, the only possibility is to the number, uh, the name three for the file. I, here it is. If you type H, H and again without pressing the enter key, press the tab key, the system should complete the command ls minus L3. At which, and, and, and at which point you can press enter to execute the command. Uh, press the up arrow key and you should see the, the command again. If you press enter, you will run the command again. Uh, press, for example, control A to move uh, the cursor to the, uh, to the beginning of the line. Uh, press the right arrow once and type uh, S. So the command now is going to read less minus L3. Mm, minus L is not a valid parameter for the command less. So we go right again and and delete and the delete the key the three times. So it's going to be just less three and we can run that command. Of course, this is an empty file, so we are not going, it's not going to display anything. Less is a command that uh, pages the output of, uh, of, of the file. So it's very good for very long text files that, that they don't fit in, in the screen, but you need to see page by page. So you can use less. There is another command for that that is called more. More is, more is older than less. Less is, it has a different way of, of managing the pages. Uh, to, to exit the less common, you just press Q for quit. Aliases. Uh, a bash alias is essentially nothing more than a keyboard shortcut, an abbreviation, uh, a means of avoiding typing a log common sequence. So if, for example, we create this, this alias with this common, alias LM equals to, and in, in, included in quotes, is LS minus L pipe more. 
So this uh, alias, when you create a, an alias in your command line, the alias is only valid for that session. So you exit the session and you log in again, that uh, alias is not anymore. If you want to do that alias permanent, you have to add it to the bash rc file, the, 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 the file that I mentioned before that uh, you can add comments that are going to be executed when you log in. So after you create this alias, type in lm is exactly the same that type in ls minus l pipe more. So this command is exactly, this command plus enter is exactly the same that type in this plus enter. I have, I have aliases, for example, in my configuration, like I press N, enter, and it's all the, 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 the uh, command to get into Niagara. Let me show you. For example, I created a command alias. Uh, I, I can see an alias. If I create an alias, for example, uh, let's do the, the, the example lm equals ls minus l pipe more. Okay, if I type lm, it's going to show me my 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 the content of my directory and it's going to page. Uh, if I want to see that alias, how is defined, I just type alias lm. It shows me lm equals to ls minus l more. For example, I have an alias here, it's called n. n is sh, my username at Niagara and at the end is going to exit the shell. So just by typing N, I can connect to Niagara. And enter is going to ask a password or is going to use my keys, but it's the way that I don't have to type all this. I just type N. That's the, the, the beauty of this tool called alias. Uh, so when you are using a command uh, frequently, it's a very good idea to create aliases. And if you want to do to, to make those aliases permanent, you just add them to this to this file. Uh, the the system, especially for the root uh, uh, for the root user, it creates aliases like this one, for example, because rm uh, which is the command for deleting a file uh, could be dangerous because sometimes uh, I type something wrong. So I type RM uh, and I use tab and tab fills in the name of the file that I don't want to, 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 to delete. But I press enter and I realize that after pressing enter that I delete the file uh, that I didn't want to, to, to actually delete. And um, one issue with the command line is that, that there is no undo. So if you remove a file, the file is gone forever. So if you don't want to make those kind of mistakes, you just do a rm minus i. Minus i means uh, it's an interactive mode. So it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to delete? You just press, Y for yes or N for oh no, uh, but it, save, it can save you for uh, deleting an important file. Man, this is another powerful tool of Bash or also Linux. Uh, it's a text-based help system. I, we already saw an example with Man Bash. Uh, Man is short name for manual. Uh, 
for uh, for instance if you want to learn about man itself you can type man man and the result is a description of the man command uh, the man utility uses less for paging uh, we will talk about less uh, later A propos, a propos is uh, an index of the manual pages and descriptions. So each manual page has a short description of a label. A propos searches those names and descriptions and it finds a, a keyword. For example, if we type this one, a propos grep, it's going to show us all the different comments that have the word grep. So for example, there is grep also, of course, grep by itself, but there are comments like this one, v set and grep. So it's for doing grep on a compressed, a v set compressed file. A grep, for example, is extended grep. Uh, grep history is for quite in a database. Uh, zip grep, you can do a grep on a zip file. You don't need to decompress the file to do a grep. Uh, grep is a command that allows you to search for a, a string in a, in a very big uh, text file. So you just, let's say you are looking something in a log file. Log files are very, very long because they are writing uh, lines all the time with the logs. And you want to look for a particular string in that file. So you just do a grep and the name of the, the string that you're looking for and the name of the file. And grep will show you the lines that have uh, that particular uh, string. So for example, if you have that file compressed and you, don't, you want to do a grep, you don't need to decompress the file for doing grep. You can do the run this command, zip grep. So a propos, when you have any idea what you are looking for, you just do a propos space and the idea you are looking for. Uh, streams, redirection and pipes are very powerful command line tools in, in Linux. Uh, Linux uh, treats the, the input uh, to and output from programs as a stream, which is data entity that can be manipulated. So uh, every time that, uh, that uh, the bash or Linux is going to run a command, it open at minimum three file descriptors. Uh, uh, one file descriptor is a standard in, a standard input is um, where the command is going to read input if there is any input to read. A standard output where the command write, writes the output of what he does. And uh, the third uh, file descriptor is a standard error where the command writes either error messages or diagnostic messages. So basically it's a standard input, reads from, a standard output writes to, and a standard error writes to error messages and diagnostics. Uh, well, here is the explanation, sorry. Exploring types of streams. Standard input programs accept keyword input via a standard input, which short name is a standard in. In most cases, this is the data that comes into the computer from a keyboard. Not all commands need a standard input. For example, if you run ls minus l, it doesn't require any input. ls minus l enter is going to list you the, the director, the content of the directory. But what does ls minus l, for example, do with the list? It writes the list to a standard output. 
So usually a standard output is, is the, the, the screen, the text mode screen or a GUI window in, if you are in a, in a graphical environment like Xterra, for example. A, a standard error, Linux provides a second type of output screen known as a standard error is intended to carry high priority information such as error messages uh, or diagnostic messages. Ordinarily, a standard error is sent to the same output device as a standard output. So you can't easily tell them apart. You can redirect one independently of the, of the other. You can, for example, redirect a standard error to a file while leaving the standard input normally going to the screen. You can redirect input and output. To redirect input or output, you use the symbols following the comment, including any option in text. For example, to redirect the output of the echo comment, you would type something like this. So the comment is echo uh, dollar sign NNTP server. Dollar sign is for expanding the value of an environment variable. So NNTP server is a variable and the dollar sign just uh, basically is the value of the of that variable. If you do just echo dollar sign NNTP server, it show is going to display the value of the variable in the screen. But let's say you don't want to see that var that value in, in the screen, you just want to keep it in a, in a file. So you redirect a standard output to a file. In this example, the file name is nntp, nntp server.txt. So the result is that the file nntp server.txt contains the output of the command. So the redirection operators exist to achieve several effects. Uh, we are going to see in the next slide. Uh, greater than oh, this operator it creates a new file. You have to be careful because if you are redirecting the output of a command to a file and the file exists, it is overwritten. So if there was anything in that file, the content of that file is lost because it overwrites the file. Uh, greater than twice appends. It means that it's add the standard output to an existing file. So if the file doesn't exist, it exists, it's created. But if it already exists, it's not overwritten, it's appended. Uh, the number two and greater than creates a new file containing a standard error. So the three file descriptors that I was speaking about, uh, they are identified by numbers. Zero is a standard input, one is a standard output, two is a standard error. So for example, if I am running a command that is going to produce a lot of output, but I just want to see the output in the screen, I don't want to see the errors. I can redirect the errors to a file with, that, uh, with, this, uh, with this example here. So to redirect to a file. So all the errors are going to go to that file. And after the command ends, uh, terminates the execution, I can go and take a look to that file to see what were the errors uh, made during the execution. If you do the redirection operator twice, it's going to append. Remember that this in, is overwritten if you use one operator, but if you use two, it's going to append. Uh, this one, for example, is, it, it redirects both a standard output and a standard error. 
to a file. This construction, for example, is only valid in recent versions of Bash. So as far as I remember, this construction is not allowed in a Mac because as I already told you, uh, the Bash version of the Mac is a little bit older than the Bash version of Linux. So this construction only works on, on recent. Can you listen to me? I think something happened to the microphone. It's all good. Okay, thank you. Uh, this redirection operator is for reading from a standard input. And if you do it twice, it accepts text on the following lines as standard input. This is mostly used in scripts. So you can read several lines inside the script until there is an end of file. And this uh, it uses the same file for a standard input that for a standard output. Piping. This is another powerful tool in, in Bash or in, in Um, programs can frequently operate on other programs output. For example, you might use a text filter in programs such as grep to manipulate text output by another program. So this, the solution is to use data pipe. A pipe redirects the first program standard output to the second program standard input. So the example here in the black box we have two commands. The first command, pipe, the, the vertical line, and the second command. So the standard output of first becomes the standard input of second. So in this case, for example, if we are going to, let's see, I think there is an example here. Ah, okay, if, if, for example, first generate some system statistics. Uh, this output may be lengthy and you want to trim a little bit. So you might therefore use a second, uh, a second command, which could be a script or another command that echoes from its standard input only the information in which you are interested. The grape common, common is often used for this role. And you can uh, use uh, uh, these sequences in arbitrary length. So there is almost no limit to do that. So in this example here, the standard output of first becomes the standard input of second, and the standard out output of second becomes the standard input of third. The uh, a standard output of third becomes the standard input of fourth, and so on. So you can use this kind of construction to, for example, be manipulating text until you get what really you are looking for. I think there is. Uh, Many simple commands are available to manipulate text. These commands are complete tasks uh, of various types, such as combining files, transforming uh, data in files, formatting text, displaying text, and summarizing data. Uh, so for example, file combining commands, uh, combining files with cat, the cat command uh, the, is a short uh, name for concatenate, concatenate. And this tool does just that. It links together an arbitrary number of files end to end and sends the result to a standard output. So for example, you can combine two files, first text txt and second txt. In, and the, uh, all the, the content of those two files uh, uh, are uh, put in that file, combine.txt. 
the, the command cat combines those two files in the same order. So first, it outputs the content of first. And when it finishes with first, it begins to append the content of second in, in that file combined text. Uh, also, cat is uh, used to display content of a short file. For example, you can do cat uh, for a small file and it will show you the content of the file in the, in the screen. So for example, if you have a file that is two, three lines long, you just do cat and the name of the file, enter, and you will see the content of that file in, in your screen. Mm. For example, com converting tabs to spaces with expand. So sometimes text files contain tabs, but programs that need to process the files don't cope well with tabs. Uh, you may want to convert those tabs to spaces. And the expand command does that. So, uh, Uh, also, if there are many space characters contiguous, uh, that span program will uh, get uh, will uh, assume that that is a tab. Sort. This is a a, a very powerful tool. Is for sorting the order of a of a of a file. Uh, Basically, the command sort reads a file and uh, delivers the, the sorted the sorted output to um, to the to a standard output to the screen. Uh, you can uh, sort has uh, several different flags for achieving different behaviors. For example, if you want to ignore case, uh, you just uh, with this flag minus F or this long flag minus minus ignore case. If you want to sort by the month, let's say you can do the sort by the month with this flag. Uh, numeric sort with the flag minus N. Uh, if you want to do a reverse, uh, a, a reverse uh, sort minus R. And uh, if you have several fields in, in the text file, you can, uh, sort by field. For example, the default is to sort by the first field. But if you want to sort by the second or by the third, you just use this uh, flag minus K. So this example here, for example, is we have a file that has a phone number, a, a last name and a first name. And we want to sort by the first name. So we do a sort minus K3 and the name of the file is going to sort by the first name, this column here, Barry, Gertrude, Samuel, Teresa. The sort command supports a large number of additional options. Uh, remember the man, uh, the man, uh, pages so you can do man sort and it will show you many many options that uh, this command have okay these are file viewing comments so sometimes you just want to view a file a part of a file a few comments can help you accomplish this goal without loading the file into a full flesh editor uh, for example, if you want to see the first lines of a text file, you use head. 
So uh, the default with this command head is 10 lines. If you want to see just the first line, you just do head minus one and the name of the file. Uh, head is useful, for example, if you are looking at a, a syslog file, which is very long and can be accumulating lines for many days or weeks. So you just want to, to know when this log file started to, to log. You do a head, you see the first line of the, of the file, and you can tell that, oh, this file started one week ago, last Monday, it started to log. So the minus n will show you number of lines. Uh, also, you can tell uh, the command to display number of characters. Okay, the opposite part of head is tail. So tail works like just like head, but it, tail displays the last lines of the command. So the default are is the last 10 lines of the command. And you can use minus C for bytes or minus N for lines to change the amount of data displayed. Uh, tail has also a, a flag that head doesn't have. That is minus F, minus F is for following, to follow the, 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 the input, the, the data that is entering a file. For example, if you are looking at, at a log file and you want to see the lines that are being added to that file, you do a tail, tail minus F and the name of the file. So every time that a new line is added to the, to the file, you will see that line in the screen. Same here, man tail, if you want to know of the different uh, uh, capabilities of this comment. Patient, we already talked a little bit about less. Less uh, is, uh, the name is like a joke, is a reference to the more command. The more command is a very old command in Unix. That is uh, basically the purpose is to show a very long text file by page by page. So more shows you the, the lines that can fit in your screen. For example, if your screen is 100 lines long, it's going to show you 100 lines and, it, and it's going to wait. When you press the space bar, it's going to show you the next 100 lines. And again, it's going to, to wait for you to press the space bar. So every time that you press the space bar, you are going to see a, a new page. Less basically is the same, but it has a, a other like uh, sub comments that help a lot. Uh, so the purpose is to read a file at one screen at a time. So if you press the space bar, you more move forward to the through the file one screen. Or you press B, you are moving backward. So let's say, for example, I am in the, after pressing bar, uh, the space bar several times, I am in the middle of the file, but I want to move backward to see again something that probably I missed. So I press B and I move backward one screen at a time. D moves forward half, half a screen at a time. And U, move backward half a screen at a time. So the up and down arrows can move up and down one line at a time. You can search the, the, the where you, while you are doing less, you can search the file. So if the file is very, very long, and you just want to go to the line that contains a string, you just type a slash and the search, the search term and enter, and it will go 
to the first occurrence of that string. If you want to look for another occurrence of the same string, you just type n, and n goes to the next. And again, n to the next. If you want to do the same, but backwards, you just type capital N. Capital N or uppercase N will do the same, uh, will repeat the search, but backward. You can uh, move to a specific line. So for example, if the file has 2000 lines, you want to go just to line 50, you type 50 G. G will go to the line 50. Line 50 is going to be the first line in the top of the screen. So the next line is 51 and the next 52 and so on. Uh, a, a single G will take you to the beginning of the file. Capital G or uppercase G will take you to the end of the file. And uh, when you just finish, you can type Q. Mm -hmm. We can do an, an example. Of, let me do an example of this. Remember that a man uses less for patient. So this manual page, we already know that it has uh, about 4,000 lines. So every time I press the space bar, I will get a new page. If I press B, I'm going backward one page. If I press D, I go forward half page. U, backward half page. If I want to go to line 1000, I type 1000G. This is line 1000. If you press the equal sign, it will give you a statistics in the, in the bottom. So for example, it's telling me that in this screen, I'm looking at 33 lines from line 1,000, 34 lines actually, from line 1,000 to line 1,033. If I want to go to the beginning of the file, a single lowercase g, I go to the beginning of the file. Uppercase g will take me to the end. Of, of the file. Okay. Uh, extracting text with could. The could command extracts portion of input files, of input lines and displays them on a standard output. You can specify what to put from input line. So basically, when you are reading a text file, uh, a normal reading will show you the full line. But if you want to see only part of that line, you use uh, the common could. Uh, you can could in several ways. For example, minus B, will, will you, you can could from bytes, using bytes. So you can tell the command, for example, to show me the bytes from byte four to byte 40. It will show me only those bytes in the line. Uh, minus C is uh, uh, characters in, in, the, in the line. Uh, minus F is very useful, is minus field by, by field. Uh, by default, the, the, the delimiter is uh, tab, but you can do, for example, minus F, and with minus D, you say which character is the delimiter. For example, if I want to delimit there with comma, it's a, let's say it's a comma, comma separated uh, values file, C, CSV, I can do could and I want to see the third, uh, the third column of that CSV file. I can do could minus F3 minus D comma and the name of the file. 
and it's going to show me only that third uh, field in all the lines of the file. For here, there is example of could and pipe and, and everything. Let's say, for example, that we have, we want to extract, this is, this command if config will show me the configuration of a, of a, a network uh, interface. So if I type if config eth1, it will show me that is the configuration of ETH1. But let's say I just need to know the IP address or the hardware address, the MAC address, which is this one here. Is this one here? Uh, and I just need to, to, know, to know that. I, I don't need anything else. So what do I do? I do I, I have config uh, pipe and I said grep uh, this word hardware address which is here. So the, the other lines are going to be ignored. Just with this construction is going to show me the only line that has this uh, this string because there are no more lines in this in this file with that string. So I get this and now I need to put. So if I count the spaces here, I can uh, deduct that this is the 11 uh, the 11 field. So I, what I can do is could minus D the space and show me only the 11th field. I am going to get this. So this combination of three commands separated by pipes is going to show me the MAC address, which is the, only, the thing that I was looking for. I don't need to, the, the other information that, I would, that was in the, in the initial output. Uh, in, in a script, for example, if you need to know the MAC address, for any reason, you can use this combination and put that uh, value in a variable. Uh, okay, ob obtaining word count with WC. The WC command produces a word count. That's what WC means in this case, as well as line and byte counts for a file. So if we have a file uh, like this one file.txt and do a WC, we will show you those three numbers. Those three numbers means that it has 308 lines. Uh, it, it, for counting lines, actually he, the, the, the command counts the new line characters. So the file has 308 new line characters. Uh, it has 2,343 words and uh, 15,534 bytes. Uh, you can limit the output to the new line, for example, or, or how many lines with minus L. If you just want to know the words, how many words are in the, in the file, minus W. Minus C will show you, or minus N will show you the number of bytes. Okay, using regular expressions. Uh, using regular expressions, uh, many Linux programs employ regular expressions. One of those programs, for example, is GREP, uh, which are tools for expressing patterns in text. Are the simplest regular expressions can be plain text without adornment, and certain characters are used to denote patterns. Uh, okay, let's understand regular expressions. Two forms of regular expressions are common, basic and extended. Uh, 
which form you use depends on the program. Uh, some accept one form or the other. The difference between basic and extended are the complex uh, and suitable, but the fundamental principles are both the, the same. Uh, this, the simplest uh, type of regular expression is an alphabetic string, such as Linux or the one in the last example that we did, HWADDR. Uh, this regular expression match any strings with the same size or longer that contains the regular expression. For example, the HWADDR regular expression match matches HWADDR. The real strength of a regular expression comes in the use of non-alphabetic characters, which activate advanced matching rules. So for example, bracket expressions, characters enclosing square brackets uh, constitute, constitute a bracket expression, which match any one character within the brackets. So for example, this regular expression here will match anything we have the letter B and the letter G, and between B and G, any of these vowels. So it is going to match all these words, back, back, big, bog, book. So if I'm doing a grep, for example, in a text file, and I use this regular expression, all the lines that contain any of these words are going to show up. Uh, you can use a bracket expression for a range expression, which is a variant. Uh, range expressions list the start and the end points uh, separated by touch. So for example, if you have this regular expression here, it means that between the letter A and the letter Z, you can have one character that can be two, three, or four. So the regular expression is going to match this. It, remember that this is one character. This, the, the, the bracket means one character, even here also. This is for just one character. That can be any of this one, any of this. Any single character, the dot represents any single character except a new line. So for example, if you if this is your regular expression, you can match this, A to Z, A, B, Z, A, Q, Z, or any other three character that begins with A and ends with Z. Because, uh, the carat represents the start of the line and the dollar sign denotes the end of the file. So for example, if I, if I had a carat starting here, it would only match this, these words if they are in the beginning of the line. Same if I put the dollar sign after the set, it's going to match these three words, but if they are at the end of the line. Uh, we can use repetition operators. So, Remember that the brackets is only for one character. So a full or partial regular expression may be, fo may be followed by a special symbol to denote how many times a matching item must exist. Specifically, an asterisk denotes zero or more occurrences. Plus, a plus sign matches one or more occurrences and the question mark denotes zero or one match. For example, the dot uh, combined with the asterisk here, it will specify any match, any substring uh, in, in this regular expression. So in this regular expression, a dot asterisk Lincoln will match any string that contains A and Lincoln and anything in the middle. So for example, A Lincoln is going to match, Abraham Lincoln is going to match because it's A 
many characters Lincoln. So there are many, uh, uh, and, and uh, it, it, there is no limit to the length here. So you can see that there are three bytes here, but there are more than three bytes here. And this regular expression matches any of these two. Uh, multiple possible strings. The vertical bar separates two possible matches. So it, it acts like a OR, OR. Uh, car truck means either car or truck. This is a regular expression. Uh, having in mind that bash for bash, the vertical line is the pipe line, we have to enclose this regular expression in quotes. So the bash uh, doesn't get, uh, get confused with this pipe, thinking that there is uh, the end of the command and the start of a new command. Parentheses. Ordinary parentheses surround super expressions. So parentheses are often used to specify how operators are to be applied. For example, you can put parentheses around a group of words that are concatenated with, with the vertical bar to ensure that the words are treated as a group, any of which may match without involving surrounding parts of the regular expression. Escaping, if you want to match one of the special characters, such as a dot, you must escape. That is, present it with a backslash here. For example, if you want to match the dot itself, dot, mm, sorry. What is something happy here? Uh, if you want to, to, you just press it with a backslash. For example, if you want to match to to match uh, this dot, you just you have to escape the dots like here, like the, like the example here. If not, it's going to look for any character between this n this N and this E. If you don't escape the dot, uh, this, this character here can be any. The grep command is extremely useful. It searches for the file. We already saw that, that contains a specified string and returns the name of the, of the file uh, and the line of content with that string. The basic syntax, syntax of, is of uh, grep is as follows. So grep, there are options, the regular expressions at the file or files is going to look uh, for. Uh, the regular expression is a regular expression as, as we already described. Um, and the grep command supports a large number of options. Uh, some of more common options uh, uh, allow you to modify the way the program searches files. For example, counting ma matching lines. Probably you don't want to see the lines themselves, but you want to know how many lines contain that string. So you just do a grep minus C. So the output of grep minus C, regular expression, name of the file, is going to show you how many lines contain match the regular expression. If you don't use minus C, it's going to show you all the lines that match the regular expression. Uh, minus E uh, is ignore case in that case, uh, in this, case, uh, the regular expression ignores the case. So you can look for the word in uppercase or lowercase. Recursively is a recurse option, search the specified directory and all subdirectories that rather uh, looking at a single file.
for example, you use an extended regular expression. The, the grep command interprets regex as a basic regular expression by default. To use an extended regular expression, you can pass the minus uppercase E, uh, or, atten or alternatively, you can use E grep rather than grep. Uh, so E grep is the equivalent uh, to doing grep minus uppercase E. So a simple example of grep uh, is this one. If you see the is minus R and the file is not a file, it's a directory. So what is going to do grep in this case is going to look for the string ETH zero in all the ETC directory and subdirectories. So if I am looking for any kind of configuration that is related to ETH zero, I, I can do by, by running this command. So it's going to look for the string ETH zero in all ETC directory and subdirectories. And every time that it finds a, a match, it's going to write the name of the file, uh, semicolon, and the line matching the, the regular expression, in this case, ETH zero. Let's say, for example, that we are looking for ETH zero and one, because this uh, Linux system has two cards, ETH zero and ETH one. And I want to look at the configuration of those two cards. So I do a grep uh, ETH bracket zero one, it means zero, zero or one in all the files under ETC. In this case, there is no minus R, but it's ETC asterisk. Asterisk means all the files under ETC. Uh, a still more complex example of all files in etc that contains the host name twain example.com or bronto pangea.edu and later on the same line the number 127. So let's take a look at this uh, at this uh, regular expression. Uh, that, that is obviously an extended regular expression. So we are in, in closing in, in parentheses, these two different possibilities. Look for twain.example.com or bronto.pangea.edu. If you find any of these two, also look that there is number 127 in the line after the, the occurrence of any of these two. And look in all the files under etc. So this is a kind of complex regular, uh, standard regular expression. So two names separated by the vertical line. So name, this name or this name plus any, any quantity of characters and 127. And there can be more characters to the right of 127 because there is no dollar sign here. So I am not asking that it has to end in 127. It has to have 127 in any part of the line. Uh, this command illustrates another feature or uh, you may need to use shell quoting because the shell uses certain characters such as the vertical bar or the asterisk for its own purposes. You must enclose uh, certain regular expression in quotes. So uh, the shell is not uh, attempt to parse the regular expression as shell commands. So the pipe by itself is a shell command. But if we want to use as an or inside a regular expression, we have to quote the regular expression. So you can use grep in conjunction with commands that produce a lot of output. For example, you want to find the processes uh, of a running extern. So you just run this command. PS is a command that show you the processes in the system. Uh, PS is for process status. AUX are flags. Uh, A is all. 
uh, u show users x is for extended and show me only the lines that have the word x term so this the list is the all the running processes called x term and in the line there are the pits uh, the pits it means process id so every process in linux has a process id it's a number an integer uh, you can use grep to further restrict the output on some other criterion. So if the initial is still uh, too much. Set. Set is a very useful uh, command that basically it modifies the contents of files or it modifies the, the output that is being sent to a standard output. So set uh, with options uh, is um, options for uh, different options. For example, minus F is a script file and you have the input file. When this set command executes, it reads from that input file, but the output is going to the screen to, to standard output. Uh, in, in this case, input file is the name of the file you want to modify. And uh, a script uh, is a script file that you, you can uh, write the different modifications that you want to perform on that file. And it said just reads uh, the modifications from that. Set is powerful command, but remember, man set. So let's say, for example, I have a text file called Cal uh, 2018. So this is for calendar 2018. So I just want to modify the file, this input file, and create a new file that is going to be called Cal uh, dash 2019. So I'm going to send to, to change the first occurrence in every line of 2018 to 2019. So I run this comment. Set, this is the, the expression for change. So replace 2018 with 2019 of this file. The output in this, in this one file. But remember, it's going to change only the first occurrence. If you want to change all the occurrence in, 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 the, in the line, you just add a G at the end. A G is for global. So, and the, by default, the modified file or the modified output is sent to a standard output. In this case, the, is, the standard output is redirected to a, far, a file called CAL 2019. Any questions? Don't forget that there is an assignment. <laughs>